Okay. So the first thing you're going to do once you're in Inkscape is go to your document properties and you want to make sure that this is the right size. Um, you can go with, uh, you can either type in the 18 by 24 inches or you can go just with A2, but make sure that it's landscape so that it's oriented properly and that will save you all kinds of time. Um, your guides, you have grids, you've got all this kind of stuff. Um, your units are in millimeters, which is what we want. Everything's fine there. So once we have that, uh, you're going to want to make sure that your, the rectangle into which you are putting the living hinge pattern is oriented such that it will bend as it is on the page left to right. Um, so if we were looking at, for example, your, where did I put it? Here we go. Your plan, right? I can make this a little bit bigger. You will notice that this is oriented in the sheet uh, vertically and you want it to bend vertically here. So what I might do is in your, when you make this box, uh, if you know the dimensions of this rectangle, you don't actually need all of the rest of this in Inkscape. You just need the dimensions of this rectangle. Okay. So whatever these dimensions are, when you build that rectangle, in Inkscape, okay, I'm going to, hopefully, you're going to want to build it not landscape orientation the way that was, but you're going to want to do it vertically this way, right? So if you are, so this little guy, right, see how this is horizontal, but you want it to bend vertically? We want it to bend the short way, right? So we want this to bend the short way. So in order to do that, we have to orient the long narrow box this way. Uh, you need to have the box selected before you go into your extension. And there's extension render living hinge. Boom. Right where you put it. Um, and again, these are the defaults. The defaults should work just fine. Uh, and then you can hit apply and it'll work and then apply it to the box you have selected. If you don't have a box selected, before you open the living, living hinge, it gives you that message of like, where's your box? And then you have to go select one. Um, so this, as you can see, oops, there we go, is now oriented so that it will bend the short way. Um, so then you would take this whole thing uh, as a file, right? So we would save this, save as, and uh, whatever you're going to call it. You can do it as an SVG file is your best bet. Oops. Inkscape SVG. You can also do a plain SVG. It doesn't really matter, but an Inkscape SVG is fine. Um, then when you go to open this in Illustrator. Okay, let's do part two here. Okay. So let's say, let's pretend this is your, uh, your box design, right? You have this guy doing this and you want the, um, hinges to go across and you've got whatever other like pieces and parts you've got over here, whatever, no problem. Um, you're then going to want to open that SVG file. Yeah, there it is. Uh -huh. All right. So when you open this, right? You'll notice you have the box and you have the hinge part. We only need the, the hinge part. All right. Under here, you have a couple of things. You have the, um, the outline that we don't need, right? There's your outline, outline, non outline. You don't need your outline. You only need the hinge part. So select only the hinge part and then you can copy it and paste it. Um, preferably with nothing selected here. Now hold the shift key down, move that to 90 degrees and that's going to go over here. Now it should fit perfectly. You cannot, don't just do this, right? Cause now the spacing and everything is wrong and it's going to make a mess when we go to cut it. Um, so the size it is when you build it, it should fit perfectly when you put it over here. 
So obviously I just made a really big one when I did the example. Um, but that's the best way to then get it into your Illustrator file. And the reason, the other thing to think about is when you put this here, you want to make sure that your uh, horizontal cut paths go out the edge of your, right, over the stroke line that you're dealing with or right up to it, right? So if it's a little bit longer, that's not a bad thing. What you don't want to do is, oops, have this like that, because then this thing is solid and it won't bend, and then it cracks and breaks in the most inopportune ways when you get to that point. So make sure that this is at or just over the cut line, because you're going to cut on this line too, right? You're going to make, eventually, these are all going to be 0 0.001, because they're all cutouts. Um, and then if you are doing additional decorative things, uh, your graphics can be need to be rasterized, obviously, so they're embedded in the file, and black and white works better than grayscale. So hopefully that helps, and I look forward to seeing how it goes. If you get stuck at any point, please just let me know, and we'll go over it together. Good luck!